Hello and welcome to this VBA for Excel intermediate tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be going through an introduction to loops in VBA. Loops are fundamental components of any programming language and allow sections of code to be run multiple times. This tutorial is going to focus on the for next loop. Now before we get started you might notice that this is the first video that I have done that uses Excel 2010 but all of the concepts of this video will still be applicable to previous versions of Excel. If this is the first time that you're using VBA in Excel 2010 you may need to get access to the developer tab on the ribbon. You can do this by going up to file here and selecting options. From here select customize ribbon and check the box next to where it says developer here and press OK. Now let's get started. I've got a new Excel workbook open here, but to get started I'm going to need to open up the VBA editor. You can do this by pressing Alt and F11, or you can go to the Developer tab here and press the Visual Basic Editor button. Now I'm just going to insert a new module into this workbook and give our macro a name. If you are unfamiliar with any of this, I recommend watching some of my earlier videos, in particular my introduction to the VBA editor. The for next loop is one of the most commonly used loop constructs in VBA. To use it, the first thing you need to type in is for, and then the name of the variable that will be used as the counter. I'm going to use x. Then we need to specify the values that we want our counter to loop through. I'm going to put in equals 1 to 10. Finally, we need to enter a line at the end after our initial line that says next x. Of course, this x here should match what you initially called your counter variable up here. What this section of code is saying is create a variable called x and set it to 1 and then run any code in between these two lines. When it gets to here it will increase the variable by 1 and then go back to the top unless the counter variable becomes larger than the upper limit which we set here. In this case it's 10. Don't worry if this isn't making much sense yet. It will become more obvious when we actually enter some code to run between these two statements. So, in between our two loop constructs here, I'm going to enter some basic code for our macro to loop through. So here, I'm going to type in cells 1, 1 dot value equals 1. Now we could run the macro like this and our loop would work correctly in that this section of code here would run 10 times but the loop itself would be a bit pointless as this section of code here never changes. The useful thing about the counter variable is that we can use it within the code that is looped to make the code dynamic. This line of code here is saying go to the cell in row 1 column 1 and enter the value 1 into that cell. One thing that we could change about this line to make it more dynamic is to replace this 1 here with our counter variable. Another thing that we could do is also make the number that is entered into the cell dynamic for example by changing this 1 to x times 10. Now let's run the macro to get a better look at what our code is doing. Before I do this I'm just going to rearrange my windows so that we can get a better view of how the macro is working. Now I could run the macro by pressing the play button here which would execute the, all of the code in one go. But instead I'm going to run one line at a time by pressing F8. As we press F8 the VBA editor highlights the line that will be run 
the next time that we press F8. So if I press F8 again, this line of code runs and it highlights the code that initializes our loop. If I hover over our counter variable, you can see that it is currently empty. However, this will change the next time that we press F8, as X will be set to the first value that we set here. And as you can see, as I press F8, X has now become 1. As we're using X within this line of code here, this section of code changes every time our counter variable changes. Currently, it is saying, go to the cell in row 1, column 1, and enter the value of x times 10 into that cell, which is 10. And if I press F8, you can see that this is indeed what it does over here. When it gets to this next statement, it would increase the value of x by 1, and go back to the start of our loop. As you can see, x is now 2. So this line has changed and now enters the value 20 into row 2, column 1. If we keep pressing F8, you will see that this pattern continues until we get to 10. Up here, we told our loop to run from 1 to 10. So once it gets to this limit, VBA knows not to loop through this section of code anymore and instead continues to run the rest of our macro, which in this case is the end sub statement, the end of our macro. There are some interesting things that we can do with loops. One of these is to combine them with if statements to check for certain conditions in our data. If you are unfamiliar with if statements in VBA, I recommend viewing my earlier Making Decisions in VBA video. So, over here we have the multiples of 10 in column A. I'm going to set up a loop to check if any value of any of these cells is equal to 50, and if it is, fill in that cell in red. To do this, I'm firstly going to delete this line, and then type if cells x comma 1 is equal to 50 then cells x comma 1 dot interior dot color index equals 3 3 is the color number for red and then finally enter end if. Now, if we step through our code one line at a time again by pressing F8, you can see that as the value of x changes, the code checks a different cell in our range for the value 50. Currently, as x is 1, it is checking the cell in row 1, column 1, to see if it is 50. As that cell doesn't have the value 50 in it, it doesn't execute this line of code within our if statements and instead it continues to go through the rest of our loop. It will continue to do this until it finds the value 50 which is in row 5 so it will be when x is equal to 5. When it finds the value 50 it executes this line here and changes the fill of that cell to be red. Then it continues to loop through the rest of the code. You can see how this kind of code would be useful, but there's one key problem with our code the way that it currently is. If I go to our data here and enter another 50 to the bottom and remove the fill of this cell here and then go back and execute our code again you'll see that this bottom 50 does not become red. This is because we have hard-coded the upper limit of our loop to be 10 here. But as there are now 11 rows, we need this to be 11. We could change it to be 11, but it would be better to make this limit here a dynamic variable. To do this, I'm going to enter another line before our loop and type in final row 
is equal to cells rows dot count one dot end Excel up dot row. This is quite possibly one of the most useful lines of code to know if you're going to be writing macros for Excel. What this line is saying is go to define a row of column one, which is here, and then it does the equivalent of pressing control and up to find the final row of our data. It then sets the value of a variable called final row to be equal to the row number of this cell, which in our case is 11. So now, if I change this 10 to final row, and then remove the fill here, and run our macro again, you can see that it does indeed pick up this final 50. If I were to add some more values to the bottom of our data, you'll see that it will also pick up these additional 50s that I've entered down here. And that's all I wanted to go through in this tutorial. I hope you found it interesting and check back for some more tutorials from VBA for Excel.